Supraventricular tachycardia. Now I left this one in its own module and that's because supraventricular tachycardia may be driven by the SA node or the atrial tissue. And so we really need to recognize that this is above the AV node, but we're not sure what's driving the rhythm. Supraventricular tachycardia or SVT as it is referred to, is a term used to describe a narrow complex that's the QRS complex, where the P waves are not discernible and that it is rapid rate. So greater than 150 beats typically. The key thing is we can't determine the P wave. What we do know from this rhythm is that the pacemaker is somewhere above the atrioventricular node. So that's either the SA node or the atrial tissue itself. So if we come back to our electrical conduction pathway, we're looking at a driving force that exists between the SA node, the pacemaker, and the atrial tissue. Somewhere in here, the heart is just gone rogue, and the patient is most likely to be feeling signs and symptoms of decreased cardiac output. Many causes, um, many that have been presented already before, but there's some new ones here I wanna talk about. One is medications. In particular, those for asthma. You may have noticed yourself in practice or have heard stories that when people take salbutamol or Ventolin back to back to back, they're having a really bad asthmatic attack. One of the most widely known side effects is that of an increasing heart rate. And so medications might be the cause of an SVT. You can find that stuff also available in OTC cold medications. So you wanna be watching um, drug combinations as well. Again, our cardiac pathology, anything, anything that interferes with the functioning of the heart can cause an arrhythmia. I hope, if nothing else, from this course, when you look at your patients and their pathology, and you look back and you see that they have any sort of hypertension, coronary artery disease, fibrosis, anything that deals with the heart, you may be thinking, I need to watch for an arrhythmia. Again, thyroid disease, we know that that impacts the the um, hyperhypothyroidism, the, the quickness and the slowness of the heart. Electrolyte imbalances, that's our action potential. Underlying atrial rhythm, so this is where this SVT might actually be an atrial fib or atrial flutter. And then of course, all the other causes that we've seen before. So in comparing this to the normal sinus rhythm, what stands out? When you look at this, that rapid ventricular rate definitely stands out. And now it looks regular, and this is the tricky part with SVT, is that it will look, because it's so fast, it will look like it's fairly consistent, but it may not actually be, okay? We need to give a particular medication, we'll talk about it in a minute, to slow down that heart rate so we can see what's driving the um, SVT. Other things to note, are the fact that the P wave, we can't really determine. It looks here like it's buried inside the T wave and it quite possibly is. I don't know if there's one, if there's two, if there's three, I don't know how many are existing in there, but we can't see that P wave. And so here's our characteristics. Um, the QRS is regular, but it can also be irregular, just harder to identify when you first look at it and the P wave is buried inside the T. We can't see the P wave. So our rhythm may or may not be regular. The rate is definitely greater than 150. We won't be able to calculate the atrial because we can't see it. No P wave, no PR interval. Can't do a PR interval without a P wave. QRS complex, 0.06 to 0.12. This would be considered a narrow SVT. You can have a wide SVT, and that's where the QRS is going to be greater than 0.12 seconds. And that's another, um, that's a whole other thing. QT interval, we cannot measure it. ST segment, we cannot see it. So here's our treatments. So if they're unstable, we're gonna start with vagal maneuvers. You know that bearing down. It should, the docs might do a carotid massage. They might do cold water in the face like ice cold water. You wanna get that startle reflex, <laughs> okay? And then we're gonna look at cardioversion. Again, give sedation because cardioversion is not pain free. If they're stable, again, we're gonna start with the same vagal maneuvers, bear down, try the cold therapy, hold your breath. 
And we'll try some medications. So those beta blockers, diltiazem, verapamil, calcium channel blockers. And if that's all ineffective, cardioversion. We don't want people to sit with their heart rate greater than 150 for too long because it will tucker out. Now I talked about adenosine. Adenosine is a drug that we give that works at the atrioventricular node. And what it does is it delays the conduction of electricity through the AV node. When we talked about re-entry pathways before, adenosine kind of resets everything and it allows us to see what's actually happening because it will take that rate that's going really, really fast and slow it down. Sometimes it actually pauses it. There's nothing, you'll see no electrical activity for about 10 seconds and then the heart rate will come back. I have seen where adenosine we call it flat lines, flat lines people, and then goes right back into SVT. I have also seen it where adenosine only slows the heart rate down to like high 80s, and then it goes back into SVT. And I have seen adenosine utilized and convert a patient into normal sinus rhythm. It is also a vasodilator, so you will have to watch for that flushing. Um, hypotension and headaches post-administration, you wanna watch for that. Now here's an example I wanted to show you what adenosine can do. At the beginning here, we have this patient who's an SVT. It's ticking along, ticking along, ticking along. They give the adenosine, and then we start to see the heart rate slowing, conduction is slowing, and what we ended up actually having was an atrial flutter, right? So we got this sawtooth, and it's not a consistent conduction. So we've got three to one, four to one, three to one, one, two, three, four, five, six to one. And then it seems to, to settle out there at six to one conduction. And so we were able to really identify that what we had here was an atrial flutter and not a sinus driven tachycardia. So the treatment is different. Okay, it's time to practice. We've gone over all the atrial rhythms, premature atrial contractions and we've covered all of the sinus arrhythmias for this course, and now it's time for you to practice your analysis once again. <laughs>